Hello guys, today I'm going to be reading the eighth chapter of Winds of Fire, the Dragnet Prophecy. So let's get right into it. Freezing water splashed over Clay's head. He woke up with a gasp as the rest of his body was plunged into the river. Strong talons gripped his shoulders, shoving him under the water. He trashed, terrified, and the current nearly dragged him away. The other dragon yanked his head into the air and shouted, Quit struggling! I'm saving you! Clay went limp and let himself be shoved under again. He felt the sticky poison washing from his scales, although the pain lingered. As his panic died down, memory clicked on. He lunged back to the surface. Tsunami, he yelped. He tried to wrap his wings around her, flapping and splashing in the dark. Her claws dug into the spines along his back. Seriously, Clay, stop moving. She whacked his tail back into the water with her own. I don't know what this white stuff is, but it smells awful. And I think it's trying to dissolve your scales. You stay in the water until it's all gone. She moved his claws to the rock and helped him hang on against the fierce current while she poured more water over his head. He strained his eyes, trying to see her or even a black shadow that, that might be her, but it was too dark. He clung to the feeling of her cold, wet scales against his. She was really here. How did you get free? He asked through chattering teeth. They had to shout to be heard over the roaring waterfall. Fire, Tsunami said. I realized if Kestrel's flames could merge the chains together, maybe more fire would break them apart. She knew I couldn't do it, and as usual, she figured we wouldn't help each other, because that's not dragon nature or whatever. It took Sunny and Starflight together to get the fire hot enough, but they blasted one of the links until it melted. And then I followed you as fast as I could. Clay rested his head on the rock by her talons. It felt like the cracks between his scales were singing high pitched arias of pain. Well, he said, as you can see, it's going great so far. I was just about to save the day. You would have, Tsunami said. I'm sure you would have woken up soon and made it to the river on your own. She battered one of his wings lightly with hers. Clay wasn't sure of that at all, but he wasn't about to add whining to the list of things wrong with him. Did you see the glowworms? He asked instead. Kind of cool, right? Oh, I can beat that. A moment passed, and then tsunami stripes began to glow along her wings and tail. She even turned on the whirls of light around along her snout. Dimly, the cave took shape around them. Clay had never been so happy to see anything in his life. Thanks, he said. It seems kind of unfair. You guys can see in the dark. It's the rest of us who actually need glowing scales. Tsunami ducked her head in, in an odd, embarrassed way. Well, they're not meant to help us see, she said. Clay stretched his legs and tail under the water. The goop on his scales was gone, but the stinging was still there battling the freezing numbness caused by the river. Really, he said, trying to take his mind off the pain. Then why do you glow? It's, well, he'd never seen Tsunami stammer over anything. Now he was really curious. Tell, he said, splashing her. You know, you're doing that thing you do, she said, where you talk about something ridiculous so you don't have to deal with something serious. And not, Clay protested. You're the one who's ducking the question. All right, fine, she said with a grimace. Glowing in the dark, Webb says it's to attract other sea wings. That's how we choose our partners or whatever. She shoved his head under the water again and he came up sputtering. Now, aren't you sorry you asked? He was, a little bit. The idea of Snoggy leaving them for another sea wing with cool glowing scales made Clay feel extra blob blobby and drab. So we can't go up the rocks, he said. What do we do about the waterfall? He hoped she wouldn't ask 
whether his skill still hurt. He just had to tough it out until the pain went away. She grinned. We dive right over it, she said. How high could it be? And how many sharp rocks could there be at the bottom, he countered. I'd like to see what we're jumping off first, please. All right, let's go check it out, she said. Releasing him and leaping to the water, the current whooshed her away, and he had to let go of his rock to follow her quickly before the light of her scales disappeared. Tsunami, he called. There was no way she could hear him over the roaring waterfall. An underwater boulder slammed into his belly, and he inhaled a mouthful of river. Choking and coughing, he paddled after the blurry glow in the distance. Suddenly, the glow vanished, and he was plunged into darkness again. Tsunami, he roared. A heartbeat later, Clay felt the air suddenly yawn wide in front of him. Some instinct, instinct kicked in, and he lashed out with his talons and tail. One of his claws caught a jagged spur of rock, and he flung his front talons around it just as the rest of him flew out into space. He was dangling over the waterfall. He dug his claws into the rock and hung on for dear life. Scrunching his eyes shut, even though the darkness was dark enough, his poison riddled skin screamed with agony as it stretched below his scales. He couldn't bear to think of how far Tsunami might have fallen. He could picture her broken body somewhere far below him. Something whacked his foot. Watch out, Clay, Tsunami's voice teased. It's really dangerous. You might stub a claw. Clay opened his eyes. The waterfall crashed along beside him, cascading into a foamy pile of bubbles only a short distance below his dangling back claws. Tsunami was splashing and somersaulting in the pool, flipping waves at him with her tail. Hang on tight, she cried. Whatever you do, don't let go. Ha, 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 he said. He stirred the water below him with his tail, checking for rocks, then let himself drop. The waterfall gently battered his head as he re resurfaced. You knew, you knew how short it was, he said accusingly. Maybe, she said with a grin. All right, yes, I'd just gone to the edge when I heard you yell and went back for you. Lucky I'm not the type to suffer and die in silence, Clay said, but he couldn't help thinking what would have happened if he hadn't cried out. What if we had missed each other? Come on, the river keeps going this way. Tsunami, come on, the river keeps going this way, Tsunami said. Her webbed feet swooped through the water, shooting her out in front of him. He followed her through the pool into another narrow channel with rocky banks on either side. But he cocked his head. His ears twitched. I think that can't be all the roaring, Ben. Is there more up ahead? There were weird echoes in these caves. He couldn't tell if he was hearing the roar of the small waterfall magnified or if there was something else. Tsunami suddenly spread her wings and spun to a halt, gazing up at the ceiling. Did you see that? Clay squinted into the darkness. The luminescent scales didn't cast light very far. He couldn't even see the stal stalactites that, was pro that were probably up there. No, it was a bat. Tsunami excitedly slammed the river with their tail, submerging clay in a tidal wave of water. He came up gasping for air. A bat? Why are we drowning me over a bat? Once, a bat had blundered in through the sky hole. It had flapped pathetically around the study cave until Sunny begged Dune to catch it and set it free. Clay was half convinced that Dune had eaten it instead, but at least he'd done it where Sunny couldn't see him. Because it must have come from somewhere, she said, bats go outside to hunt. So if bats can get in and out, I bet we can too. We must be close. Bats are a lot smaller than we are, Clay pointed out. But Tsunami had already started swimming. He flexed his wings under the water, worried. The pain wasn't going away. It felt like tiny, sharp teeth biting him all over under his scales. Look, Tsunami yelled from up ahead. I see light. Clay beat his wings quickly, trying to catch up. It helped that the current was getting faster again. 
But then, was the roaring getting louder too? He came around a bend in the river and saw a circle of silvery light in the distance. The dark outline of Tsunami's head was barreling toward it. Clay couldn't believe his eyes. It was moonlight, just like he'd seen through the sky hole. There really was a way out, and they'd found it. He was speeding along now, barely using his legs to paddle as the river whisked him toward the light. Suddenly, a piercing shriek echoed through the cave, and Tsunami disappeared. Please be another joke, please be another joke, Clay prayed, swimming as fast as he could. The moonlit entrance yawned wide in front of him, and then abruptly, he shot out into open space. The river plunged out of the cave and straight down a tall, sheer cliff. Clay's wings flew open and he bit, catching the air before he fell. He was flying! Thank you so much for watching this video. And please like and subscribe because I try to upload once every week. See you next time!